What's up? It's me, Will Carmack. I'm gonna be showing you how to make this epic Charizard thumbnail. This video is for all the people out there who have gone so far down the After Effects rabbit hole, they have forgotten how to use every other software, like me, like Photoshop. I, I wouldn't even begin to know how to use the pin tool in Photoshop. And honestly, this is my hot take, I do think editing thumbnails in After Effects is actually better and more efficient. And most importantly, because a lot of people don't know this, how to export a single frame from your composition from After Effects. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, when you open up After Effects, make sure your composition is 1920 by 1080. You can name it thumbnail if you want. That's just your standard size for a YouTube thumbnail. And now, unless you've taken a picture that you've cut out of yourself, you can go on Google and find an image of the subject that you're looking for. And you know, right now, Pokemon's pretty trendy. Thanks, Logan Paul. So I looked up Charizard because I figured Nintendo is so old, there's probably lots of images of Charizard that someone else already cut out. So once you find your Charizard and you right click and save it, you can just drag it into After Effects. And this part's simple, you can just move it with the mouse wherever you would like. And the easiest way in After Effects to flip the orientation of an image is if you come down to the layers panel and right under this cube, you click that box. It turns it into a 3D layer. And so if you hit R, it drops down the rotation menu and you can just drag the Y rotation until it flips. You don't have to turn it into a 3D object when you're creating a thumbnail. I just did it because I wanted Charizard to be facing the other direction. All right, so now let's start with creating like your typical YouTube thumbnail background in After Effects. If you come up to layer, new, and create a new solid, doesn't matter what color it is, let's just name it background and hit okay. And now we can come over to the effects panel where we type in gradient ramp to get the gradient plugin in After Effects. Let's drag that onto the background clip and it's going to turn it black and white. From there, you can click on the colors in the effects controls panel and you can play around with the colors that are complementary towards the image you've imported. So since Charizard was orange, I thought a cool contrast would be dark red and orange. And you can click on the little circle things to adjust where these gradients start and end. Easiest way to make a little dynamic background in After Effects. And now for your classic vignette. You know vignetting when you make the borders all nice and dark? I love that. And the way to do it with the best resolution in After Effects is going to layer, new, solid, and let's make a black solid. And then if you come up to the top of After Effects, if you select the circular shape tool, it will now act as the pin tool. If you select this black layer, and hold control as you drag out, you can create a perfect oval that kind of touches the edges of your composition. And now if we hit M to drop down our mask menu, we can hit invert and just feather that mask. And so now we've created a really nice high resolution black vignette that is completely customizable because we can continue to feather or change the expansion of this mask. Now here's where there's a lot of Photoshop-y type tools in After Effects. Let's come to our Charizard layer and right click. If you come up, there's an option there called Layer Styles. And if you hold the mouse over this, you'll see all of the Photoshop-y options. First, we'll scroll down and do the most easy one, Drop Shadow. And you can see that will pop up and we can continue to adjust just the drop shadow from the layers panel. And now again, if we right click on the Charizard layer and go to layer styles and select outer glow, I always like to use this because it just makes the image pop a little more. Yeah, we love glow, we, lo we love glow. And now for one of my favorite reasons to edit thumbnails in After Effects is the After Effects video plugins. This is the easiest way I think to add like visual texture to an image. So if we come up to layer, new and adjustment layer, we can now, for example, look up radial fast blur. And because Charizard is big and flying through the air, I want it to look like he's flying. And a good way to do that is with cool motion blur. And then I will always come up to the top of After Effects, grab the pin tool, and I will create a mask around where I want this effect to happen. So if just the edges of Charizard are this blurred, it just gives this cool depth effect and it makes it look like there's visual texture in the image. Yeah, I feel like that's a really neat trick. I use it for all of my thumbnails. Is the adjustment layers in the motion blur. It's a great trick. And now, 
to continue the excitement. Check, check, check. Another great After Effects plugin you can use to make thumbnails just rock is either the Lens Flare plugin that's native to After Effects or the one I love to use from Red Giant, Null Light Factory. If we create a new adjustment layer and throw on Null Light Factory, there's an option in the effects control panel where you can hit designer. Once you click that, you can pick from a list of flares and you can pick one that matches like the color of your image or the type of brightness you want to exude. I don't know. So I picked one that would match like the fire on Charizard's tail and I clicked okay. And just the adjustments anyone would wanna worry about would be scale, brightness, and source location. Easy to find, easy to use, especially when you're only animating one single frame. Adding sun flares is my new secret weapon. So sun flares, great for blending. And now for another one of my trade secrets, which I'm sure a million other people do, that editing in After Effects allows you to do something way epic. It laughs at the efficiency of Photoshop. It's being able to download third-party assets like Sparks and Fires and selecting a single frame within that video to use for your thumbnail. So instead of downloading like 15 different PNG images of Sparks, you would only need to download one 30-second video of Sparks to get like a hundred different options to pick from for one single frame. I, I know that makes sense. And so I'll pick this great Sparks one. I think it would go good with Charizard because you know, fire sparks coincide. And so I will download that and bring it into After Effects. So once you just move it around with your mouse, you can scale it, rotate it. You can easily just duplicate this asset, spin it around and kind of create a natural frame with the sparks you've downloaded. Wait, really quick, we gotta change the vignette a little bit. Never stop blending. Oh, and like I mentioned earlier, we love glow, especially with spark assets. If you go into the effects panel and you type in glow, the glow that's native to After Effects rocks. Just grab that and drag it onto the two spark assets or any glowing thing that you import into After Effects. It will automatically make those layers just pop and make Charizard look more epic. We love glow. Sorry guys, it's really late and I haven't had any coffee. Check, check. And I'm anxious about my microphone. <laughs> and now for max blending capacity noise. So if we come up to the effects panel and type in noise, this is one of the best ways to blend in a bunch of different assets. So for example, if we look at Charizard, he's way more high res than the text in the background. And so if we put this noise effect on Char <laughs> Char on Charizard and we crank the amount up, you can see that we are adding this natural grain that will help it match the resolution of everything else on screen. It's a little detail, but I think it goes a long way. It just makes everything in an image look like it belongs together. Like it was taken at this, you, you know what I mean. We love noise. Okay, time for last minute adjustments, remember? Never stop blending. Okay, and now that you have this crazy timeline with all these different layers for just one single frame, I always pre-compose it. So let's select Control A to select every layer, right click and hit pre-compose. I'll just name this thumbnail. And then from here, it's super easy, just like Adobe Premiere. I will look up the plugin Lumetri Color and drag that onto the clip. And then from there, I'll do final touches like changing the contrast, the saturation, the shadows, etc. And it just makes your time timeline tidy to have everything pre-composed and when you color correct you don't have to look at all these different layers. Okay and now it's time to export. How do you export a single image in After Effects? I have the answer. So if you come up to the top of After Effects where composition is, the drop down menu will say save frame as. If you click on that Click File, and the Render menu will pop up where the timeline is in After Effects. And if you come down to the bottom where it says Output Module, where it says Photoshop in blue, just click on that, and then all of the formatting options will pop up. And in that drop-down menu, select JPEG Sequence. You hit OK on that bigger pop-out, and you go down into the Render menu again, and you go to Output Two. And when you click on that blue word, you can just select where the file will be located. And now you can finally click on that cool button that says render. And because it's just one frame, ooh, the best render noise ever. It'll export in a second. And if you come back down to output module, you can click on that blue link and it will open up 
the file in your Explorer. And that is how you can use After Effects to create a really good YouTube thumbnail. It's honestly the only way I've been making thumbnails for the past two years. Granted, I'm a special effects artist, so I basically use After Effects all day and all night. But for some people who may struggle with Photoshop, this could be easier. So yeah, and so bam, or, or you know what? Maybe to start like controversy, I'll, I'll say this about Photoshop. Editing thumbnails in After Effects is easier. Okay. All right, now that we've established drama, let's pay for the rent. Sorry, I'm in a weird mood, I don't know. Let's thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Let's say you're a videographer, like me. You can set a video as the background to your website. So when people come to your page, they can automatically see your incredible work. That's pretty captivating to me. And maybe you're not a videographer, but a photographer. That's perfect too, because Squarespace has award-winning designer templates. Mix that with the fact that they have portfolios for photographers. You can display your work to the world in a sleek and fashionable. And lastly, I love that Squarespace has Squarespace scheduling, because if you're like me and you work on an appointment-based schedule, you can make your schedule public so the people who come to your website can sign up for your sessions or whatever you do makes scheduling so easy breezy. Squarespace empowers people with creative ideas to succeed, and I know you want to succeed, and I'm sure you're creative. Reach down, deep down, you got this. Hi, Mom. <laughs> so go to squarespace.com slash willcarmack to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Squarespace, and everyone, I hope you love thumbnails. That is all. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day. Cool!